Hi guys, welcome to this Easy Maths video and today we will be looking at the 2018 Senior Maths Challenge exam. Question 1. When the following are evaluated, how many of the answers are odd numbers? We've got 1 squared, 2 cubed, 3 to the power of 4, 4 to the power of 5 and 5 to the power of 6. We've got answers as A is 1, B is 2, C is 3, D is 4 and E is 5. So, first of all, we know 1 squared is 1 which is odd. We know 2 cubed is 8, which is even. Now, when we get to 3 to the power of 4, you could work it out, which is 3 times 3 is 9, 9 times 3 is 27, and 27 times 3 is 81, which is odd. You could work it out that way, but I think a better way in thinking about it, and a much more quicker way in thinking about it, is if you have an odd number times an odd number, it's going to give you an odd number. No matter how many odd numbers you multiply another odd number by, the result is always going to be odd. An odd number raised to any power is always going to be odd. We can say the same for 4 to the power of 5. Any even number raised to any power is always going to be even. So I'm not going to work that out, I'm just going to say that's even. And then we can apply the same concept to 5 to the power of 6, which is going to be odd. And therefore, we've got three answers which are odd. Therefore, our final answer is C. Question 2. The positive integer 2018 is the product of two primes. What is the sum of these two primes? Got answers as A is 1001. B is 1010, C is 1011, D is 1100, and E is 1101. We know that the first prime number is 2. And because 2018 is an even number, we know that 2 is a factor of 2018. So we know it's going to be made up of another factor. So if we halve 2000, we get 1000, and if we halve 18, we get 9. So we get 1009. Now, what we need to see next is whether 1009 is made up of any other factors. No, it's not a multiple of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, because it's not even. Um, we can do a test to see whether it's a multiple of 3 or 9 by adding the digits. Or if we add the digits, 1, add 0, add 0, add 9 is going to give us 10. And 10 is not a multiple of 3, so it can't be a factor of 3. So the only other number we can try is 7. So if I try dividing 1009 by 7, find how many 7s go into 1 that's naught, how many 7s go into 10, 1 remained of 3, how many 7s go into 30, 4 remained of 2, and how many 7s go into 29, 4 with a remainder of 1. So as it's got a remainder, we know that 7 is not divisible by 1009. So therefore, we can make the assumption that 1009 is a prime number, and therefore we have two prime factors. So the product is 2 times 1009, but we need to find the sum. So the sum is going to be 2 plus 1009, which is 1011, which we've got as answer C. So therefore, our answer equals C. Question 3. Which of the following shows the digit 6 after it has been rotated clockwise through 135 degrees? We know that this is what 6 looks like when it hasn't been rotated. If it's been rotated 180 degrees, it will look like a 9. And if it's been rotated 90 degrees clockwise, it will look something like this. So, if we add 180 and 90 and divide them by 2. We will get 180 plus 90, which is 270, and 270 divided by 2 is 135 degrees. So therefore, we imagine that's the direction at 0 degrees, that's the direction at 90 degrees, and that's the direction at 180. Then the direction at 135 must be exactly halfway between 180 and 90. So we need to find a 6 that is pointing in that direction. And we should be able to see that agrees with answer D. So therefore, answer equals D. Question 4. Which of the following is not a multiple of 5? 
got answers as A is 2019 squared minus 2014 squared, B is 2019 squared times 10 squared, C is 2020 squared divided by 101 squared, D is 2010 squared minus 2005 squared, and E is 2015 squared divided by 5 squared. Okay, so if we have a look at each of the answers separately, starting with A, we've got 2019 squared minus 2014 squared. Now what you should be able to notice is that this can be rewritten in the form as the difference of two squares. So we said 2019 is x and 2014 is y. And this would be x squared minus y squared, which would factorise to x plus y and x minus y. So we can apply that exact same concept here. So we're going to have 2019 plus 2014 times by 2019 minus 2014 and we know that 2019 plus 2014 is 4033 2019 minus 2014 is 5 and therefore writing it in that form we can see that 2019 squared minus 2014 squared has 5 as a multiple so therefore our answer is not a so I can tick that off now let's look at b B is 2019 squared times 10 squared. Because 2019 squared is multiplied by 100, and we know that 100 is a multiple of 5, we know that B cannot be our answer. So we'll tip B off. Then C, which is 2020 squared divided by 101 squared. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this as a fraction. And I can see that 101 squared is a factor of 2020 squared. So if I write 101 squared on the top of my fraction, then I know in order to get 2020, I'm going to need to multiply it by 20 squared. Because we get 100 times 20, which is 2000, and then plus the 20 times the 1, which gives us 2020. So then what happens is the 101 squared cancel out and you're left with 20 squared. I know 20 is a multiple of five, so therefore my answer can't be C. I'll tick that off. Now an answer D is 2010 squared minus 2005 squared. Well, I know that 2010 and 2005 are both multiples of five, therefore I can say that that is not my answer. So the only answer we are left with is E. Now I'm just gonna double check E. So if it's 2015 squared, divided by 5 squared. Well, I can rewrite this in its fraction form. And I can take the square out. Then I can do 2015 divided by 5. So it's how many 5s go into 20, which is 4. And how many 5s go into 1, which is 0. And how many 5s go into 15, which is 3. So this is the same as saying 403 squared. Well, I know 403 is not a multiple 5, because it doesn't end in a naught or a 5. Therefore, I can safely say that my final answer is E. Question 5. Which of the following numbers is the largest? We've got answers as A is 397 over 101, B is 487 over 121, C is 596 over 153, D is 678 over 173, and E is 796 over 203. So, if we have a look at each of these answers separately, starting with A, which is 397 over 101, I'm then going to work out an estimate for this result by rounding both my numerator and my denominator up and down, depending on the last digit. So, for instance, 397 because 7 is greater than 5, I'm going to round up 397 to 400. And then we've got 101, which I can round down to 100. So that's going to give me a result of 4. So we do the same for B. So we get 487 over 121. Well, what I can say is that this could be 120. And then I just need to think about my 12 times table. Well, I know 48 goes into 12, that means 480 is going to go into 120. And that is also going to give me an answer of 4. 596 over 153. 
Now, if we round up 596 to 600 and round 153 down to 150, 600 over 150 is pretty much the same as saying 60 divided by 15, which is 4. And then D is 678 over 173. Now on this, we can round 173 down to 170, and then round 678 up to 680. And that's kind of the same as saying 68 divided by 17, which is 4. E is 796 over 203. Round 796 up to get 800, and round 203 down to get 200. And that also gives you an answer of 4. All of these answers, when we round both the numerator and the denominator, either up and down, depending on its last digit, we get estimates of 4. And the question asks us to find the largest number. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to think about these numbers and think which numbers are a bit smaller than 4 and which numbers are just a bit larger than 4. So 397 over 101. Well, if that was 397 over 100, that would be 3.97. So because it's over 101, it's going to be a bit more smaller than 3.97. But we know that's definitely smaller than 4. So I'm just going to draw an arrow going down just to show that it's lower than 4. Now B is 487 over 121. Because we know 480 over 120 is 4, and obviously 487 is larger than 480, we know that this is going to give us a result which is larger than 4. So I'm going to draw an arrow going up. Now to get from 600 to 596 we go down by 4. To get from 150 to 153, we go up by 3. So this is going to be smaller than 4. So do an arrow going down. And to get from 680 to 678, we would go down by 2. To get from 170 to 173, we would go up by 3. So because our denominator is getting larger, our fraction, when it's simplified, is going to get smaller. This is also going to be less than 4. Now that's gone down by 4, and that's gone up by 3 when we compare it against our estimates. And that is pretty much the same result as what happened with answer C, and that was less than four. So we can say that answer E is also less than four. So therefore the greatest value must be answer B, because it's the only value which is higher than four. So therefore answer equals B. Question six, which of the following is equal to 25 times 15 times 9 times 5.4 times 3.24? Got answers as A is 3 to the power 9, B is 3 to the power 10, C is 3 to the power 11, D is 3 to the power 14, and E is 3 to the power 17. So I'm going to write this out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at each of these terms and try and write it in powers of 3. If I can't write some of these terms in powers of 3, for example 25, then I'll just write it in terms of another power. So instead of 25, I'm going to write 5 squared. And then 15 I know is 5 times 3, so I can write, I'll just leave that as 5 times 3, and that will be 3 to the power 1, times 9, which is 3 squared. Now, 5.4, I'm going to think of this as 54 over 10. Well, I know 54 is 9 times 6, and I know that can be rewritten as 3 squared times 3 times 2. So in other words, this can be rewritten as 3 cubed times 2. So I'm going to replace 54 with 3 cubed times 2. And then I'm going to do the same with 3.24. I'm going to make this times 324 all divided by 100. Now 324, let's think about its factors. If we divide it by 2, we get half of 300 which is 150, half of 24 is 12, so that is 162. Divide that by 2 again, half of 100 is 50, half of 62 is 31, so that's going to be 81. 81 we know simplifies to 9 times 9, simplifies to 3 times 3, and so does this 9. So we can say 324 is equal to the factors of 2 squared times 3 to the power of 4. So if I replace 
324, with two squared times three to the four. Then now what I can do is I can simplify this whole top fraction. So if I simplify the threes first by adding the powers, I'm gonna get three times three squared, which is three cubed, three times three cubed, which is three to the power of six, three to the power of six times three to the power of four, which is three to the power of 10. Then if I multiply everything else, I've got five squared times five, which is five cubed, and I've got two times two squared, which is two cubed. And now that is all gonna be divided by 10 times 100, which is a thousand. And what you should find is that five cubed is 125 and two cubed is eight. And if I do eight times five, I get 40. Eight times 20, I'll get 160. And eight times 100, I'll get 800. And that all simplifies to 1000. So therefore five cubed times two cubed divided by a thousand cancels out. And then I'm just left with three to the power of 10. So that is answer B. Therefore, answer equals B. Question seven. The circles P, Q and R are all tangent to each other. The centers all lie on a diameter of P, as shown in the figure. What is the value of circumference of Q plus circumference of R all divided by the circumference of P? The answers is A is one, B is a half, C is a third, D is a quarter, and E more information is needed. So the key to this question is first knowing that the circumference of a circle is equal to pi multiplied by the diameter, but then also spotting the fact that the total diameters of circle Q and R is equal to the diameter of P. So if I say diameter of Q plus diameter of R equals the diameter of P. So if, if the total of Q and R's diameter is the same as diameter P, then it doesn't really matter what each of their diameters are separately. Because if the diameter of P is the same, then surely the circumference of P is going to be the same as the total of the circumference of Q and the circumference of R. So therefore, the circumference of Q plus the circumference of R is equal to the circumference of P. And if the circumference of P is pi multiplied by the diameter, and then we're dividing this result by the circumference of P, then it's just gonna be pi multiplied by the diameter divided by pi multiplied by the diameter, which gives me an answer one. Therefore, my final answer is A equals one. So therefore, answer equals A. Question eight, what are the last two digits of seven to the power of 2018? We've got answers as A is not seven, B is 4, 9, C is 4, 3, D is 0, 1, and E is 1, 8. So for this question, rather than looking at 7 to the power of 2018, first I'm going to look at the powers of 7. So we start with 7 to the power of 1, which we know is a 7, and therefore it ends in a 7, because 7 is the only digit. 7 squared, which we know is 49, and then 7 cubed, which is going to be 49 times 7. So 9 times 7 is 63, and 7 times 40 is 280. Add those together, you get 3. 6 over the 8 is the 4. Carry the 1, you get 343. So the last two digits here are the 4 and the 3. Then we've got 7 to the power of 4, which is the 343 times 7. So if I continue this column multiplication, so we get 21, 7 times 40 is 280, and 7 times 300 is 2100, we get 1, 
naught, carry the one, that's four, we get two, four, oh, one. And then let's have a look at seven to the power of five. So again, that's gonna be 7,401 times seven. It's gonna be seven. That's just gonna be zero. And then seven times 400 is gonna be 2,800. And then seven times 2,000 is gonna be 14,000. So all of that is 70861. So the last two digits of 7 to the 4 were 01, and the last two digits of 7 to the power of 5 are 07. So what you should see with 7 to the power of 5, you get the same last digits as 7 to the power of 1. I mean, this could be coincidence, so I'm going to check 7 to the power of 6, and I would expect my last two digits to be the same as 7 squared, which is 49. So I'm going to times 16,807 by 7. So that's 49, that's naught, naught. Seven times 800, it's 5,600. Seven times 6,000 is 42,000. And seven times 10,000 is 70,000. And what you'll see is that ends in a four nine, and then we carry that down, that's six, that's a seven, and that is 11. So we get 117,649, so it ends in a 4.9. Now look at 7 to the power of 2018. Well, from a previous question, which I think was question 2, we worked out that the prime factors of 2018, 1009 and 2. So we can rewrite this as 7 squared and 7 to the power of 1009. Well, I know 7 squared is 49, and then I'm going to think about the powers of 49. So I know 49 to the 1 is 49. 49 squared is going to be 7 to the power of 4, which is 2401. And 49 cubed is going to be 7 to the 6, which is 117649. So therefore, the powers of 49 only alternate between 49 and 01. So yeah, I know anything raised to an odd power is going to end in 49, and anything raised in, with an even power is going to end in 01. So if I rewrite 7 to the power of 2018 as 49 to the power of 1009, well, I know 1009 is an odd power. So therefore, it's going to end in 49. My answer is B. So therefore, answer is B. Question 9. The diagram shows a rectangle AEFJ inside a regular decagon ABCDEFGHIJ. What is the ratio of the area of the rectangle to the area of the decagon? Got answers as A is 2 to 5, B is 1 to 4, C is 3 to 5, D is 3 to 10 and E is 3 to 20. So if we have a look at the shaded rectangle, if we draw a line to create a diagonal through from F to A and another diagonal from E to J, what we should see is that this forms four congruent triangles. One, two, three, four. They're all congruent because two and four are identical and one and three are identical. So I'm going to draw a diagram to show how triangles 1 and 3 are identical to triangles 2 and 4. So triangle 1 looks something like this. And triangle 3 is going to be symmetrical to that. So that is both triangle 1 and 3 joined together by their bases. We draw a line going through the centre of these two shapes. You should be able to see that this shaded region now forms triangle 2, and this shaded region forms triangle 4. So therefore we can say that the rectangle is made up of four congruent triangles. Now if we draw some more diagonals going through the centre, connecting opposite vertices with each other, with one going through C to H, B to G, and D to I. And we can say we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10 congruent triangles within the decagon. So the question says, what is the ratio of the area of the rectangle to the area of the decagon? Or we can say the area of the rectangle is made of four congruent triangles to the area of the decagon, which is made of 10 congruent triangles. So therefore we can divide both sides by two and we get two to five. And that is therefore answer equals A. Question 10. On a training ride, Laura averages speeds of 12 km per hour for 5 minutes, then 15 km per hour for 10 minutes, and finally 18 km per hour for 15 minutes. What was her average speed over the whole ride? Your answers is A is 13 km per hour, B is 14 km per hour, C is 15 km per hour, D is 16 km per hour, and E is 17 km per hour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a list of all of her speeds and her times across the whole journey. So we know she starts with an average speed of 12 km per hour, and that's within 5 minutes. Now, because her speed is in km per hour, we need to convert our time from minutes into hours. So we know that there's 60 minutes in an hour. 5 divided by 60, we will get 1 12th of an hour. And then she travels 15 km per hour. 10 minutes, so again if we do 10 divided by 60, which is 6th of an hour. And her final speed is 18 kilometers per hour for 15 minutes, so 15 divided by 60, which is a quarter of an hour. And we know the formula, distance equals speed times time. So we know over the whole journey, the distance is going to be constant. So what we can do is we can work out the distance of the whole journey by multiplying each of the average speeds by the time. That will give us the total distance. And then we can rearrange this formula to get speed, which is going to be equal to distance divided by time. And then we can take the total distance and divide it by the total time across the whole journey. And that will give us an average speed across the whole journey. So total distance is going to be 12 times 12 plus 15 times 1 sixth plus 18 times a quarter. This simplifies to 15 over 6, which simplifies to 5 over 2, and 18 over 4 simplifies to 9 over 2. So 1 plus 5 over 2 plus 9 over 2 simplifies to 1 plus 14 over 2. 14 over 2 is 7, 1 plus 7 is 8. And it's the distance, so it's in kilometres. So we've got the total distance, which is constant. And now we can just divide that by the total time. And then we need the time in hours, because her speed is in kilometres per hour. If we do a 12 plus a sixth plus a quarter, that will give us the total time in hours. 12 plus a sixth plus a quarter. Well, I know 1 over 6 is the same as 2 over 12, and I know 1 over 4 is the same as 3 over 12. So that all simplifies to 6 over 12, which is the same as a half. So we've got the total time, which is half an hour. We've got the total distance. So now we can just plug that into our formula. Speed equals distance over the time. And that's 8 divided by a half, which is the same as doing 8 times 2, which can be 16 kilometers per hour. We can say, therefore, our answer equals D. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. You can check out my other videos on this page. And also, if you've got any questions or any video suggestions, just leave a comment down below.